Hi everyone, I hope you are having an awesome day. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with another tutorial. It's about SSO in Keycloak via Python Flask server. And method is OpenID Connect. Uh, actually, Keycloak has also solution uh, through XAML but I selected OpenID Connect because Python have the facility and uh, there are so many advantages of the OpenID Connect. So I selected to uh, use OpenID Connect. In this regard, first, I would like to have a demo to show you how it works between the one app and the key clock using the SSO uh, single sign on. And then we will jump to the code to show you how it can be implemented. So as you observe, this is the logging uh, page of the SSO. And just you need to have the, the username and the password in Kikilog. Uh, and then it will be connected to APP, which I created. This is this is the my app just for purpose of the uh, this tutorial, and also it is possible to log out. So if I jump to uh, key clock and then you will see for this user, and this is the the time and the date and uh, the the login of the. Uh, for this user. So now I am going to log out. And when I'm logging out from the app, also it will be logged out from the key clock as well. So you can see now it's logged out. So this is the uh, solution which I would like to implement through the to the Python. But before we go to the code, we need to create a client for my app. In that case, you would need to go to client part of the key club, and here you will see that there is one create. So before I created one client for my app as a F app, so I will show you how you can configure it in key club. So you need to uh, select the one ID, client ID, with the, we can say the name. And enable is by default is enabled. If you off it, then it will be disabled. This is the login thing. So it's not mandatory. It's based on your idea and is optional. This is the protocol, the method which I am using to open ID Connect. But as I said, also, it is possible to use a XAML and a confidential. You need to select this confidential because uh, we will use this token later. So these are, you need to keep it on. And if you are curious about the, each item, you can hover on this question mark and it will give you some explanation about each item. Uh, you would need to pass the URL here, which uh, in this case is my app, my uh, server, uh, app server. And this is uh, what you need. And later you will see it also should be available in, in your code for your configuration part. Then uh, you need to keep other item as a default. The only thing you need to configure is a, uh, this part as a browser and direct grant and save it. Then you need to go to credential and select the client and the secret. So this is the secret which you needed. You need to copy this secret. Later you will use this secret uh, for configuration. Uh, and then also you need to uh, have the, some items like the email to configure the email and the profile. In my 
code only email and profile is uh, selected, but you can add more based on your option. If you need to add the family name and some other uh, attribute is also possible. But for, in my case, only email and profile is uh, mandatory. Uh, and then you need also create the one user, which that user should have the role for uh, connect. And if you want to assign the admin, uh, definitely you can, but for creation of the token to connect with the key clock, definitely that user need to be admin role. Uh, which you can map in the role mapping. Yeah, okay, I think now uh, we are good to go. Let's jump to the code part. Before we go to the details, I would like to highlight the some points here. These are the necessary frameworks which you need to install uh, in your environment. And as you observe, these are the version which I used and I tried only these two versions. Uh, they are matched together and they can, uh, for example, this Flask and Flask uh, OIDC. These are uh, the version which worked for me. So I would suggest that uh, if you are going to try this, uh, same as my code, then it's it necessary to use this version. Okay, as you observe here, uh, this is the code for uh, Flask app, or we can say the Flask server, and you need to request the, some, uh, we can say the frameworks, and you need to install them. If you didn't install, please install all of these frameworks and uh, just you need to search. If you don't know how to install most of them with the pip install, you can install in your environment. So you need to call these uh, uh, frameworks and as well as the open ID connect. This is also available in the Flask. So uh, I will explain about the configuration of the, this open ID. Then uh, we will come to the secret key. This is the secret which you need to uh, provide by yourself. And also, if you need to debug, then you should uh, keep it as a true. Other items is uh, related to the, mm, the client secret JSON file, which you need to prepare this JSON. Uh, and uh, it's required some specific uh, items and it's available in the key clock server. So uh, this is the format of the, this JSON file. And as you observe here, there are some items like issuer, authentication, URI, client ID, uh, secret, this client secret, which before I mentioned about this, and also the this URI, which also I said, and I shown you that how you can find it. Uh, the other information is available in the key clock server. Let jump to the key clock and then show you that how you can find it in the realm setting. If you are using the open ID, then just you need to click on the open ID and you can find all this URI here, and then you need to pass this information to the uh, that JSON file. So let's jump to the code part. Uh, after you define this JSON file, you need to configure the like these items, which you can find it here, and as you. If you remember, I was talking about the email and profile, it's here. 
is configured as a mandatory part. So you also can uh, add more attribute here, but in, for my case only recognize the email and profile mm, is enough. Uh, then you need to call the app. And uh, here I have the two parts as a login part. Uh, and I defined, okay, if need the, the login, then come to the index. Otherwise, get back to the login. This only for this case. And also for the logout, uh, this is the, the, the session. I would need to clear the session because if you do, do not uh, say clear the session, then uh, it will not be log out and it will keep the login. So this is the format of that. You need to call this issuer and uh, also this uh, with URI. Actually, the whole URI for the logout is this way but I divided into two, these two parts to uh, come together. Then finally, you will call it uh, here. Uh, for, this is not necessary. I will explain in another video about this item. Uh, but uh, what we need about the, the username and the password and the token URI, which also is necessary, and also the token payload. You need to pass this and get this, uh, the, the item for getting one token, and based on the that token, uh, you can log into the um, key clock for SSO. And this part is for getting the token uh, every time when you log into the system or you request uh, or for the token, you, know, you can get this token. Just uh, I wanted to get this token for the purpose of the login and so on. So this part later I will explain this is not necessary for uh, SSO is just for add the user and later I will make another video in this regard. Just I want uh, to to show you get if you get the one login you will see that uh, some token here and that that is why uh, that part is written. Okay, now the server is up and running, and this is the URL, and when I sign in, it will connect to the APP, and you can see here, now it will show the token. And also if I go to the session part, I can see the last and start the date and log out. Do you want to log out? Log out. Yeah, this is done. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like button and subscribe channel. I'll see you in next video.